we will take a look at representing algorithms using flowcharts, also known as flow diagrams, in this first video of the two-part video presentation about flowcharts and pseudocode. We saw that algorithms could be expressed as written descriptions in the algorithms video. Computer algorithms could also be represented using two other formats called flowchart or flow diagram and pseudocode. Let's take a look at flowcharts, also known as flow diagrams here. We will take a look at pseudocode in part two of this two-part presenta video presentation. Flowchart is a graphical or visual representation of an algorithm. Flowchart uses formal, formally agreed standard symbols connected by lines with arrows to show the flow of the algorithm. Due to its graphical nature, flowchart is easier to read and understand. Since flowcharts use formally agreed symbols, these are standardized and you don't find any variations in terms of how flowcharts are, pre are presented. Let's now look at symbols used in flowchart. This symbol is used to indicate start or end of the flowchart. Flowcharts always have starting and ending points indicated by the symbol. This symbol is used to indicate input to or output from the process within the algorithm. It denotes the external inputs to and outputs from the process or operation that is carried out within the algorithm. This symbol is used to indicate the process or operation that is performed within the algorithm. This symbol is used to indicate the selection or decision within the algorithm. It is used to present a question in the algorithm which has only two answers, typically true or false, or yes or no type of answers. Then depending on the answer, algorithm takes one of the two paths. It always has one arrow going in and two arrows coming out from it, showing the two logical paths. The two answers are labelled along the two arrows coming out. One directional arrows link the above symbols, showing the logical flow of the algorithm. Let's take an example of the algorithm to add two numbers that we saw in algorithms video. Here is the descriptive text. Set number 1 to 10. Set number 2 to 20. Add number 1 and number 2. Output the answer. Let's now draw the flowchart or flow diagram for this algorithm. This is first symbol for our flowchart. As seen earlier, it denotes the start of the flowchart. The arrow coming out from the symbol shows the direction of flow in the algorithm. We draw the next symbol to denote the process. Here, we are assigning the value 10 to number 1. We are using assignment operator, or symbol equal to, to perform the assignment operation. In computer terminology, number 1 is called variable. We will discuss about variables in detail in a separate video, but let's just talk a little bit about variables before we move further. As the name suggests, variable is something that does not have a fixed value. It is a container where you can store a value which could be changed during the course of the algorithm or program. Variable is given a name to, so that we can reference a variable by its name. The name of the variable is also known as an identifier. What we are doing here is storing value 10 in a variable called number 1. We now draw process symbol again to denote another process. Here. We are assigning value 20 to a variable called number 2. Or in other words, we are storing value 20 in a variable called number 2. We draw the next symbol to denote process one more time. Here we are performing addition operation. So when we say add number 1 and number 2, values stored in variables number 1 and number 2 will be added together. That is 10 and 20 will be added together. So whenever we perform any operation on variables in this way, we are instructing computers to perform the operation on the values stored in the variables rather than variable names. This is very similar to the concept of substituting values in the mathematical equation. For example, if you have to solve the equation a plus b and you have been given values as a equals 2 and b equals 5, 
then substituting these values in the equation, a plus b will become 2 plus 5, which equals 7. I hope you got the point. We draw our next symbol to denote output. Here, we output the answer of adding 10 and 20. Finally, the last symbol denotes the end of the flowchart. We have drawn our first flowchart. Since this was a very simple algorithm, we did not need to use all the flowchart symbols that we have seen earlier. Let's now look at algorithm to calculate difference in two numbers and draw a flowchart for it. Here is the descriptive text for this algorithm. The first symbol denotes the start of the flowchart. The next symbol denotes input that will be used in the process within the algorithm. In this step, we are getting user to input the first number and storing that in variable called number one. The next symbol denotes another input from user and we, and we are storing that in variable called number two. The next symbol is the decision symbol that we have seen earlier, but have not used it so far. It denotes decision or selection. Here, we are asking a question and making a decision. Is number one equal to or bigger than number two? Here, we are using a relational operator greater than or equal to to check if number one is equal to or bigger than number two. We will talk about various arithmetic, relational and Boolean operators in a separate video. In this step, we are instructing the computer to perform a comparison operation on the value stored in variables, rather than variable names similar to what we saw in previous algorithm. If the answer is yes, that is, if number one is equal to or bigger than number two, then we will take the path along the arrow labeled with true. If answer is no, then we will take the path along the arrow labeled with false. We now draw process symbol along the true path to denote a process where we subtract number two from number one, that is. Subtract the value stored in variable number two from the value stored in variable number one. We now draw process symbol along the false path to denote a process where we subtract value stored in variable number one from value stored in variable number two. You need to understand that at any given pass through the algorithm, computer will only take one of the two routes. A route along the true path, if the number one is equal to or greater than number two, or route along the false path, otherwise. These both paths will lead to the next step. The next symbol is process again. It shows the process of storing the result of one of the two subtract subtraction operations performed earlier in a third variable called number three. As you can see, paths from both the subtraction operation leads to the process of storing the result into a third variable called number three. The next symbol denotes output. Here we output the result stored in variable number three. It is the value stored in the variable that will be output here, rather than the variable name. Finally, symbol denotes the end of the flowchart. Single directional arrows in the flowchart shows the direction of flow in the algorithm. Let's now take one final example before we conclude this topic. A bank has launched a new credit card and they are offering 5% cashback on purchases over £500 in the first month as an introductory offer, with the maximum cashback capped at £100. So if the cashback amount is more than £100, then it is reduced back to 100 Here are the steps of the algorithm to calculate the cashback. Algorithms allow user to enter the monthly purchase amount. If then check, it then checks if the purchase amount is greater than £500, and if that is true, then it calculates 5% cashback. But if purchase amount is less than £500, then customer should not get any cashback, so cashback amount is set to zero. Algorithm then checks if the cashback is greater than £100, and if that is true, then it reduces the cashback to 100 but if cashback is equal to or less than £100, then it does not alter the cashback amount. Finally, in the last step, algorithm outputs the cashback amount. 
let's draw a flowchart for this algorithm. We draw the first symbol as usual to denote the start of the flowchart. Then we draw the next symbol to denote input where we ask user to enter the purchase amount and store that into a variable named purchase AMT. We now draw a decision symbol to denote selection or decision. Here we are checking if the value stored in variable named purchase amount is greater than 500. We are using a relational operator greater than to compare the purchase amount with 500. If the purchase amount is greater than 500 pounds, then we will follow the route along the path labeled true and calculate the 5% cashback by multiplying purchase amount by five and dividing it by 100. We draw the process symbol to denote this. If the purchase amount is not greater than 500 pounds, then we will follow the route along the path labeled false and set the cashback to zero. We draw the process symbol to denote this. In the next step, we again draw a decision symbol to denote selection or decision. Here, we are checking if the cashback amount calculated in the previous step is greater than 100 pounds. We are again using relational operator, greater than, here to compare the cashback amount with 100. If the cashback amount is greater than 100 pounds, then we will follow the route along the path labeled true and set the cashback amount to 100. That is, we will reduce the cashback to 100 pounds as it is not allowed to be more than 100 pounds. This is shown by the process symbol. If the cashback amount is not greater than 100 pounds, then we will follow the route along the path labeled false and do nothing. Or in other words, we do not change the calculated cashback amount. Now, depending on which path the algorithm has taken, based on the decisions taken in the above two decision steps, the value of the cashback amount will either be zero if purchase amount was less than 500 pounds, or cashback amount will be 100 pounds if cashback amount calculated is greater than 100 pounds, as it will be reduced back to 100. Or, it will be the actual calculated cashback amount if the 5% cashback calculated was equal to or less than 100 pounds. We then output the results stored in the variable cashback denoted by the output symbol. We draw the final symbol to show the end of the algorithm and flowchart. I hope you will now be able to draw flowcharts to represent simple algorithms. Let's recap. Flowchart is a graphical or visual representation of an algorithm. Flowcharts are easier to read and understand. Flowcharts use formally agreed standard symbols connected by lines with arrows to show the flow of the algorithms. Since flowcharts use formally agreed symbols, these are standardized. We will take a look at pseudocodes in part two of this two-part video presentation.